Yesterday night, the NFL finished their top 100 list, and there's plenty of players that did not make the list. And I'm going to give you a top five of the players that should have made a list, but were actually snubbed. Now, to start off at number five, I have Brian Marshall. No, not the wide receiver, but the linebacker from the Denver Broncos. He's one of the big leaders on the number one defense in the NFL, and he's done a very good job being a run support linebacker, and he has done a good job in coverage. Now, the fact that he was snubbed on the list just feels a little bit ridiculous. I definitely thought he should have been at least in the 91 through uh, 100 range of players. Because if you're one of the leaders on the best defense in the NFL, you definitely deserve to be on the list. Then, at number four, I have the up-and-coming strong safety for the Atlanta Falcons, Keanu Neal. Now, Keanu Neal had a great campaign with the Atlanta Falcons, taking the Falcons to their first ever Super Bowl, or their second Super Bowl. And when I look at this, Keanu Neal is definitely a great safety in this league, and he's definitely up and coming. And I hate it when Falcons fans said that the Falcons lost because of their defense. That is not true. Their defense was gassed. And trust me, you try playing 44 minutes of football out there on the defensive side of the ball. And plus, that's a team that plays zone coverage and likes to blitz a lot. Well, let me tell you this much. In that Super Bowl, they played man coverage and they did not blitz. So when I look at this, when I look at the Atlanta Falcons, that defense is up and coming and it's the real deal. And if you look at Dan Quinn, Dan Quinn was the defensive coordinator for the Legion of Boob in 2013, their best season as a defense. So Dan Quinn understands when it comes to defense. Now at number three, I have Melvin Gordon. Now Melvin Gordon is a very good two-way back, and he's definitely rebounded from his um, lackluster freshman year of the NFL. Now when I look at Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon is definitely one of the best running backs in the league, and I definitely think he's better than LeGarrette Blunt. And when I look at this, I might even like him more than LaShawn McCoy. And I think that Melvin Gordon's going to break out in 2017 because his head coach, his previous job was the running backs coach for the Buffalo Bills. And he coached LaShawn McCoy and Mike Gillisley. And Mike Gillisley, even though he only got 500 yards rushing, he had five yards per carry. And he just got in a new deal with the New England Patriots and was ranked 14th on pro football focus. So when I look at this, Anthony Lynn knows what he's talking about running back. And trust me, it's pretty hard for going from a head of um, being a head coach or coach for a specific group of players to a head coach is a very um, hard transition to do in the NFL, and most owners stay away from it. Most of them go from defensive coordinator to head coach or offensive coordinator to head coach, sometimes special teams coordinator, and they usually would rather hire a college coach than they will hire a um, personnel coach or whatnot that deals with a specific thing. But the fact that Anthony Lynn is the head coach of the San Diego Chargers, the fact that he has a talent Mel Gordon, my God, he's going to do some damage there. Then at number two, personally one of my favorite cornerbacks in the league, and he's definitely up and coming, Darius Slay. Now Darius Slay, I look at him as what uh, poor man's Patrick Peterson, or poor man's Akeem Talib. So he kind of fits that tall, wanky, fast guy skill type who can obviously catch the ball and take it back for a pick six. Now Darius Slay has definitely been um, impressive, but the issue is no one has given him any credit because he plays on Detroit, and Detroit is historically known for being consistently bad year in, year out. And when I look at Darius Slay, I am so, so happy that I saw him um, make it to the playoffs with the Detroit Lions. Because I think Slay is one of the best corners in the league. I would say he's easily top 10. I like Darius Slay more so than Josh Norman. And Josh Norman was ranked how high? 40th in the 50th range? Somewhere around there. And I definitely think Darius Slay is a lot better than what people give him credit for. And he really doesn't have much around him on that defensive side of the ball. Ezekiel Odds has a beach. I think his safeties are pretty good with Tampa, Rules, and Glover Quinn. But overall, though, Darius Slay should get more credit. And that number one is Jimmy Graham. And Jimmy Graham, I think most people watching this would agree that he's a top five tight end in this league. And yes, Jimmy Graham might not be able to block, but he's constantly a receiving threat. And I thought Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson did a good job, including him more so in the offense. And I definitely saw his chemistry with Russell Wilson and Jimmy Graham um, increase significantly from 2015 to 2016. And obviously, Jimmy Graham, he's a great tight end. Now, even though he can't block, he's constantly a receiving threat. And I prefer Jimmy Graham over Travis Kelsey any day of the week, just because of Travis Kelsey's personality. And I, don't, I just think at the end of the day that Travis Kelsey's just fast sometimes. 
I don't really think he's that spectacular a route runner. Versus Jimmy Graham, he's a little bit better of a route runner. Overall, that's my top five of the players who got stumped for the top 100. What's yours? Comment in the description below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.